Hey everybody, I'm Sarah. And I'm Vicky. And we're the Drama Mamas. Yeah, we are. This week, we are taking on Throne of Blood. Yes. Which is a Japanese film based loosely, loosely on Macbeth. Full disclosure, guys. We had, a, <laughs> we had a recording issue. So I formatted the device on which I record. And I'm like, oh, we're good to go, guys. So then we record the rest of the episode again, only to find out that when I formatted the card, all of my settings were lost. So we weren't actually recording audio. So we didn't record. So we are on <laughs> Take second three. half trace. <laughs> but that's okay. Which means I'm on wine glass trace. Yes, I have decided to uh, wait until we start recording our next episode for my glass of wine because we do them two at a time. An interesting bit about Macbeth is that in the backstage world of theater, some believe, and by some, that's what Wikipedia says, but most everybody in theater mm-hmm. is going by this. Um, believe the play is cursed and will not mention its title aloud, referring to it instead as the Scottish play. Throne of Blood, in which there may or may not be subtitles. <laughs> may or may not. So please silence your cell phones. Viewer discretion is advised. And now, your feature presentation. Yes. Okay. So Throne of Blood was made in 1957 in Japan. Uh, it was directed by Akira Kurosawa. Kurosawa. Yes. K- Kurosawa. Yes, I am likely going to mutilate these names. Yeah, I am too, but Zach, my best. Zach had a giant hard-on <laughs> about this particular director. Mm-hmm. He was talking about, like, the... The... Shit, what's that song? Chicken the China, the Chinese chicken. Oh, Kurosawa yeah. doesn't make bad films. Go and, on, I'm going to Google that. Yeah, and if he... If the guy made films, there'd be a samurai or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He, he's the reason I'm late because I couldn't watch the movie because I had it paused while he was stroking his dick to Kurosawa. And so I'm supposed to say dicks out for Kurosawa. Sorry, Harambe. It's not coming up immediately, but that's okay. Uh, all right. So he has 33 directing credits. However... Since he is a Japanese director, and I am an American idiot, (laughs) I was not familiar with anything. Yeah, no. So, I just tried to get as much, like, trivia on the people that wrote and directed it as I could. Um, After training as a painter, he actually storyboards all of his films as full-scale paintings. Okay. Okay. And he entered the film industry in 1936 as an assistant director, eventually making his directorial debut with Sanchiro Sugata in 1943. Okay. I mean, the art bit's cool. Yeah. We the don't when you debuted, it, though. The rest of it's, like, Japanese. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> I know. I mean, um, the Japanese probably do. He's also credited with writing. There were, like, four writers on this movie. And the next movie we do had a bunch of writers, too, which is annoying for me. Because I, oh, yeah. I only want one writer. Yeah. <laughs> like I only want to research one director, one writer. Right. So, he has a writing credit as well. He has 76 writing credits. Nice. Hide- Hideo Oguni has Sorry. 114 writing credits. Wow. Shinobu Hashimoto has 69 writing credits. He wrote the screenplay for The Magnificent Seven uh, that The Magnificent Seven is based on. Okay. So that just popped up. I was like, I do recognize that. <laughs> <laughs> Something sort of American. Yes, exactly. Ryuzo Kikushima has 70 writing credits. In addition to his accomplishments and as a writer, his association with Akira Kurosawa led to him holding an executive position with Akira Kurosawa Productions. In the wake of Akira Kurosawa's bizarre behavior during production and after his removal from Tora 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 in 1970, Kikushima and others resigned from their executive positions within the production company. Hmm. Hideo Oguni was Akira Kurosawa's most frequent screenwriting partner. Having worked on seven of Kurosawa's films, his specialty was in guiding the themes of the film and maintaining consistency throughout the script. Third collaborating writer, Shinobu Hashimoto, which also co-wrote this movie, 
said that their writing process was that he, Hashimoto, and Kurosawa would write the script and hand the pages to Oguni, who would either nod his head yes or no, and they would write accordingly. Huh. So they had a system. Okay. You gotta um, have a system. Right? You gotta have a system. Otherwise, it's chaos. So, acting credits. Toshiro Mifune? M- Mifune? Okay. He played Washizu. Wa- Washizu. 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 <laughs> That felt racist. I don't know why. Look, right. dude, they yelled like that throughout the entire movie. Have you ever listened to someone actually speak Japanese? Uh, I've not listened to someone, but I've listened to anime, mm-hmm. which is in. And Japanese. it's very like it's got a cadence to it that's yeah. very. It almost sounds military to me. Like it's intense a little bit. There, yeah. However, I've been trying to learn Japanese and yes. failing. Yes. And the people that correct okay. my horrible pronunciation of what I'm learning, uh, they're very soft spoken. And I, oh. I can't, it feels like they're trying to be gentle with me because I suck so bad. Yeah. But it's nice. Well, that's good. It is. Don't let them listen to this episode. No, absolutely not. Uh, so he began his career in 1947, the guy that played Washizu. Okay. He was considered early on by George Lucas for the role of Obi Wan Kenobi in Star Wars Episode Four, Five. Oh no, shit! Four. Sorry. Yes, a that's new hope. cool. And the role eventually, of course, can went you to imagine? Sir Alec uh, right. That's like, crazy. Absolutely. Even though m- m- the dude, the uh, dude, <laughs> even though he worked hard to learn his English speaking roles phonetically, his voice was always dubbed in the American films. In which he appeared. And this was one of the things that disappointed him up until the day he died. That's sad. It is sad. Although born in China, he was from a fully Japanese family. Hmm. He was considered for the role of Mr. Miyagi in The Karate Kid. But after the reading, the producers felt that he acted the role too scary. So it went to Pat Morita. Well, I couldn't imagine a different Mr. Miyagi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's childhood. Beginner's luck. <laughs> that scene. Russia. Russia. You know, Luke, um, when we talk about that movie, mm-hmm. he calls Daniel Danielson. Danielson. And I'm like, okay. you mean Daniel? And mm-hmm. he's like, Mr. Miyagi calls him Danielson. So his name is Danielson. <laughs> no. I don't know why, but I think that's adorable. Uh, he was the favorite actor of Akira Kurosawa. Well, good. At least somebody liked him. Aw. He became friendly with numerous American actors on their visits to Japan, including Charlton Heston and William Holden. That bums me out. Why? Because he freaking worked so hard to get acting parts in fucking America. And we're like, fuck you. We're going to dub over you anyway. Yeah. he. It would And suck. dubs are bad. Well. Mostly. I don't know. Like, I watched um, 3% on Netflix. is a show that's shot in Brazil, so they speak Portuguese. Mm-hmm. And... It's dubbed. And you can tell a difference when you're not actually physically acting, but you're trying to voice act someone who is. Mm-hmm. There is a disconnect there. But, like, if you can get past it, it's a really good show. And the same thing with Dark, also okay. on Netflix. It's a German show. And okay. it's dubbed. But if you can, like, get Didn't past it. you tell me it, to watch that? Yeah, you need to watch okay, that. Everyone yeah. should watch that. I think I've got that. Anyone listening notes. to this, stop. Don't stop no, what you're don't doing because you're listening to us. After this, stop whatever you were going to do and go watch Dark on Netflix. And if you don't like dubs, I'm sure there's subtitles. I just, I don't like to read and watch people acting. I feel like it's rude. <laughs> it's, that's, it, that's not exactly how I feel, but it's a form of being rude. Okay. Anyway, people work hard to act. Okay. Hush your mouth. I didn't say anything. Yeah, your face is saying a lot. Yeah, but nobody can see my face except for you. People can feel. Um, okay, so uh, he has a quote about Akira Kurosawa. I'm proud of nothing I've done other than with him. Aww. I thought that was nice. So the only other person I researched. It's nice, but it's sad. Why? Because he's proud of nothing he's done except for with him. Well, it was probably just a compliment in an ah. interview. Uh, Isuzu Yamada played Asagi. She She's has. She's fucking crazy. What was it? Eyebrows? Were they supposed to be eyebrows? I don't know what the fuck it was supposed to be. I don't know. Every time she was on screen, I was like, what the fuck? Well, I don't know. I assume that they were like drawing on eyebrows. I'm not sure. That's what I thought. I was like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe. 
So she has 140 credits, and her career began in 1930. Wow. She is the daughter of an actor and a geisha. She was trained as a musician on the three-stringed... Yeah. Traditional Japanese shamisen. Okay. Her acting career began at the age of 14. She joined the Nikatsu Studio in Kyoto in 1930 because her mother was a friend of the chief executive. International fame came through her roles in several films by Akira Kurosawa, notably her Lady Macbeth-like character Asagi in Throne of Blood. Mm Mm-hmm. And she was named a person of cultural merit by the Japanese government in 1993 and seven years later became the first actress to receive the illustrious order of culture from the emperor of Japan. Nice. Yep. And she had a nickname of Belle. That doesn't feel oh. right to me. Belle? Based solely on, her performance. on this movie. <laughs> yeah. I was, it just feels wrong. So I don't think that we were recording when I told you this, but I tried to find trivia on Japan in 1957 right. because that's when this movie was made and it's the culture there film. would influence the film more than the culture here would. Right. There wasn't a lot available. So I went ahead and got pop culture information for the world and America in general. And then I got a little bit on Japan that I'll talk about at the end. Okay. Because I figured it'd still be interesting. Sure. So a large Pizza Hut cheese pizza in 1957 cost a dollar fifty, and the most amazing thing about that to me is that Pizza Hut <laughs> was there. Was there? At all yeah, right. I was like, wow. Like when I read that, I didn't even register dollar fifty. I was like, Pizza Hut, what? Right, 1957. Yeah, that's surprising. When did when when were they founded? I don't know. Google it. I'm going to. That's weird. It says it was founded June 15th, 1958 in Wichita, Kansas. Well, maybe my pop culture website fucked up. Could be. Uh, actress Ava Gardner swam... Na- maybe that's when they went public or something? No, Maybe. It, I, don't I, don't, know. I don't know. Actress Ava Gardner swam naked in a pool belonging to Ernest Hemingway. He okay. ordered his staff that the water not be emptied. That's gross. I know, that's like the weirdest way to hit on someone ever. That's Both of those things. Yeah. Like, ooh, he's hot. I'm going to swim naked in his pool. And then he's like, oh, she's hot. Never take the water out. Right. That's gross. <laughs> it's got her juices. <laughs> I'm going to marinate in it later. <laughs> okay, so Miss USA 1957 Leona Gage was stripped of her title when it was revealed that she was 18 Married, and the mother of two children. Ooh, you know what? I feel like I read about that at some point. Uh, wasn't Vanessa... What was her name? Vanessa Williams stripped of her title because she had nudes? Maybe. I don't... Uh, I might have made that up. It's not important. <laughs> Killer bees are man-made... Oh. Yes, they are man-made hybrid species that are only found in the wild because African honeybees accidentally escaped from a scientist in Brazil... They met with the local European honeybees and created a more aggressive bee, although the hybrids have less venom. Why would we do that? I don't know. Why would we do that? (laughs) The classic slasher horror film, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, was partially based on the real murder at Gein. When Gein's house was searched by authorities in 1957, they found various oddities, including a belt made from people and a lampshade made from human skin. So gross. Yeah, I listened to the first half of the True Crime Garage on Ed Gein. I'm sure that I listened to all of it because I've listened to most all of their stuff. They were really annoying. Like, I they made a lot of assumptions about growing up in different places. Yes. Well, not all of them were wrong, but still. <laughs> such an <laughs> asshole. I feel like you're Nick and I'm the captain. Because you've got, like, all the facts and information, and, and I'm all just the col- here, like... Colorful commentary. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's me. Out of the 10,000 members of the Communist Party USA in 1957, 1,500 were FBI informants. Oh. I, you know, I tried to do a little research on, like, the Hollywood witch hunt of the commu- like of communists... Because I know that was a thing in the 50s and 60s, but I really couldn't find in anything that was, like, a short enough that I could really talk about it. I just know that it happened. And right. I only know that it happened because I read a biography on Marilyn Monroe and it was like tangential to what was going on with her. Mm. Uh, let's see. 
Bubble wrap was originally invented in 1957. Nice. It was supposed to be used as wallpaper. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's not nice. After not selling well, it was marketed as a greenhouse insulator and then eventually as packaging material. Why the fuck would anybody <laughs> think that would be a good wallpaper ever? <laughs> I don't know, but like, I kind of wish that first it was. Of all, like, right now, I can just be just like... <laughs> <laughs> Why? You just put your babies in there and bubble wrap room <laughs> and you're done. Uh, have you seen some of the car seats from like the 50s and 60s? It's they fucked up, man. Just like baskets. Yeah, pretty much. That like hung on a seat in the like Whatever. in the front seat. Yeah. It was just like a little seat for the baby mm-hmm. to just kick around it. It basically Whatever. looked like you cut off a high chair. Yeah. and put a hook on the back of it. They survived. Some, <laughs> obviously not all, or we wouldn't have all the I legislation mean, we have now. That's true. Thirteen-year-old Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin played on a BBC talent show in 1957, and when he was asked what he wanted to do after schooling, Paige said, I want to do biological research and find a cure for cancer. Hmm. That didn't spots, happen. <laughs> nope. Sunspots caused people in the UK to hear an American police officer saying, Joe, I'm going to grab a quick coffee during the Queen's first televised Christmas message in 1957. What? What? <laughs> Which I that think is hilarious. feels like it's coming from, you remember that TV episode of Doctor Who? Yeah, where Rose loses her face. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me think of that, sort mm-hmm. of. The director of the Detroit Public Library banned The Wizard of Oz for having, quote, no value for children of today, end quote, and for supporting negativism. Yeah. Okay. GQ began publication in 1957. GQ? Do you know what GQ stands for? Uh, gentlemen, no. Yeah, yeah, gentlemen's quarterly. Yeah. I wonder if it comes out weekly now. I thought you said DQ at first. I was like, Dairy Grilling Queen, chill. I could go for some <laughs> ice cream. Except it's so cold. Yeah. We had some ice cream after dinner. Fuck you guys. I'm sorry. Rory's supposed to have my bag. Oh, she really enjoyed it. <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> Japan continued to experience westernization in the post-war era, much of which came about during the occupation, when American soldiers were a common sight in many parts of the country. American music and movies became popular, spurring a generation of Japanese artists who built on both western and Japanese influences. Mm. During this period, Japan also began to emerge as an exporter of culture. Young people across the world began consuming uh K- keiju monster movies anime cartoons manga comic books and other modern japanese culture hmm. japanese authors such as yasunari kawabata and yukio mishima became popular literary figures in america and europe american soldiers returning from the occupation brought with them stories and artifacts and following generations of u.s troops in japan contributed to a steady trickle of martial arts and other culture from the country hmm. And, last bit of general trivia, Tokyo Telecommunications Engineering Corporation. That was hard to say. Forerunner. I was going to say, that was a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> Meteorological. <laughs> Meteorological. Uh, that was the forerunner, forerunner of Sony. Produced a pocket-sized radio. As the radio was too big to fit in a pocket, Akio Morita, the co-founder of Sony, made his employees wear shirts with larger pockets to give the radio a pocket-sized appearance. <laughs> it will fit in a pocket. You just gotta make that pocket bigger. <laughs> I mean, the Oscar winner... Now, this is interesting. I think. The Oscar winner for the 1957 was Bridge on the River Kwai. Yeah. Which I've never seen. Um, we watched, there's something on Netflix about Jack Whitehall and he travels with his dad Mm -hmm. and they go wherever that is. And he's like, Jack, this is the bridge on River Kwai. This is where they stood. They're British. Mm -hmm. And Jack's like Googling it and he's like, this isn't even the bridge that they actually stood on. This is just the bridge that's in the movie. And his dad's like, shut the fuck up, Jack. Well, then it's the movie where the actor stood. Right. But uh, enough. Yeah. So that's where I know that from. I've not actually seen it. Well, I <laughs> uninformed little me. I was just like, that sounds Asian. I wonder if that's actually in Japan. So, <laughs> so I was looking up if it was related to Japan and 
there was a little article that was talking about how it was ex- you know, received. Yeah. The Japanese resented the implication in the movie that their engineers were less capable than British engineers. In fact, Japanese engineers had been surveying the route of the railway since 1937 and were highly organized. In Ooh. essence, viewers disliked the glorification of the superiority of Western civilization of course. represented in the movie, illustrated by the British being able to build a bridge that the Japanese could not. The film also contains a scene where Colonel Nicholson, while inspecting the bridge construction progress, refers to the Japanese overseeing them as barbarians. In the version of the movie edited for DVD in 2000, the reference is overdubbed with a water splash sound. And I I was telling Vicky, I found a YouTube video that's basically a prep video for men in the army that were going to be stationed in Japan, and it was made in 1957. And it's got, like, these just it's like this overconfident tone of American superiority. Right. And they're just like, you know, they'll get there. They, they were talking about the um, roads and they're just like, and some of the better ones are almost as good as ours. And like, I don't know, like it felt very gross when I was watching it, but I thought I could post a link in my uh, Facebook note when I post yeah. it. So if you got, I mean, it's 27 minutes. I don't <laughs> recommend watching it. Have to All dedicate the- your but time. it might, I mean, you might find it more interesting than I did. I was just looking for more trivia because it was really hard for me to find 1950s trivia. Right. For Japan. Right. Because, you know, the West is best. <laughs> right. So <laughs> the number one movie in 1957 was Bridge on the River Kwai. Mm-hmm. Number two was Peyton Place. And okay. number three was oh, Sayonara. I probably could have done some research on that. I didn't even read. I just saw the Oscar winner and <laughs> You just copied, paste jumped in. And yeah. You're like, okay. Uh, I know I've been talking for like 21 minutes straight, <laughs> but there's more. <laughs> but wait, the oh, movie man. trivia. Jesus, <laughs> we've we've not even we've not even <laughs> gone through like the synopsis of the movie and the play. Yet. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can cut some of it, but You're the um, trivia for the movie: Takeshi Kato, who was the guard killed by Washizu, uh-huh. was worried about the thrust. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He was worried about the thrust of Toshiro Mifune's sword, so he placed a block of wood in his armpit. Unfortunately, Mifune's thrust split the block and wounded Kato. He bore the scar until his death in 2015. Wow. Yeah. That's what being chicken shit will get you. It's a powerful thrust. <laughs> I don't know why, but even when I was, like, reading it, I was giggling. The word thrust. Because you're not mature. <laughs> And I hadn't even had any wine at that point. You're but the word thrust. Child. <laughs> it just. <laughs> You're <funny>. so funny. <laughs> so the castle exteriors were built and shot high up on Mount Fuji. Oh. The castle courtyard was constructed at Toho Tamagawa's studio with volcanic soil brought in from Fuji so that the ground would match. The interiors were shot in a smaller Tokyo studio. The four scenes were a combination of actual Fuji forest and studio shots in Tokyo. Washizu's mansion was shot in the Izu Peninsula. I think I just found every possible hard word. word. Yeah. (laughs) You're like, let me find as many Japanese words that I don't know how to pronounce as I possibly can. In Japan. And fit them into this podcast. (laughs) In a single, like... We want to be as offensive as possible. In Japan, the title of Throne of Blood is... Oh, my God. (laughs) Translated to Castle of the Spider's Web. Okay, because it's the Spider's Web castle. I get you. The Spider's Web forest. and Stiff. When they were shooting, they he wanted to build a facade of a castle, but that was not practical. So they actually built, like, the outside of a castle. Mm-hmm. And they did it with the help of United States Marines, who were based in the area. That's cool. That is kind of cool. Michael Fassbender, who played Macbeth in Macbeth. In that Macbeth. <laughs> he stated that Throne of Blood is his favorite Macbeth adaptation. Interesting. Akira Kurosawa believed that Scotland and Japan in the Middle Ages shared social problems and that these had lessons for the present day. So Mm. that's why he wanted to set it in feudal Japan. Gotcha. Swear to God, that's all I have. Okay. So Throne of Blood is... I guess I'll do the plot and then you'll do Macbeth. Right. Okay. So Throne of Blood is about these two guys 
They, um, well, Shizu and Miki, they're... Miki. Miki. Who at first I put in my notes as Misu. <laughs> and then I Googled it for the millionth time, and I was like, that's not his name. He, uh, they are both, like, commanders in the King's Army. Yes. And they are, like, killing it. They basically thought all was lost, and the two of them really turned it around. Yep. So they are about to be awarded, basically... For their service. Right. And so they're going through the spider's web forest. Then they hear laughter. Laughter. How's it go, Vicky? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it, it is gets better with extra. each glass no, of wine. You know how we talked about um, <laughs> Renee being extra in Mallrats? Yes. The wise man, the evil spirit, Mr. Whiteface. <laughs> he's, he's extra. He's extra as yes. fuck. I called him Whiteface Man because... He is wearing some straight powder. Like it is a lot. It is a there, lot. He like his around his mouth looked all like crackly. Yeah, I mean he looked gross. creepy as fuck. Yeah. So they run into Whiteface. They listen to his creepy ass song for like <laughs> humanity sucks. <laughs> you all eat dicks. Yes. So he <laughs> sings for like fucking ever Forever. while he's spinning his little silk wheel. It's a spinning wheel. Yes. Uh, I googled it. I was like, what oh, the yeah. fuck is this spinning wheel called? It's a spinning wheel. Oh, <laughs> cool. The more you know. The more you know. Whiteface. Mr. Whiteface. They oh, spirit ass. Yeah. So they're just like, who the fuck are you? And he's just like, oh, who am I? Mickey and Washizu. And they're he's just like, like, I know exactly who you are. Oh, snap. You know <laughs> I like names. that you're doing the <gasps> right <laughs> without any fucking noise. You're just like, people can see me. Right. People know. People know. <laughs> okay. So they're just like, oh, snap. He knows our names. And he's like, oh, I know more than your names. And then he I tells know them your their future. <laughs> Yeah, he's just like, Washizu, like, you're going to get promoted tonight. And he's just like, the fuck I am. And he's like, not only that, you're going to become king. And he's like, the fuck I am. And he's like, oh, and Mickey, like, you're going to get promoted tonight, too. And Mickey's like, the fuck I am. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> the fuck I am. Yeah, and then he's just like, and your son is going to become king. And he's like, the fuck he is. So <laughs> they laugh. <laughs> <laughs> they run away. Uh, they're trying to get to the castle. Yeah, he laughs as they flee. <clears throat> So then they see the castle in the distance, but instead they're like, of like, man, I'm tired. Yeah. Like, Ooh, I'm beat. My armor's too heavy. These dogs are barking. Like, <laughs> I just need to sit down. Who the fuck does that? Who sees they're their like, destination in the They're distance? like, the house we're going to is a block down the road, but I really need to pee. Yeah. Who does that? So they stop and they just laugh and laugh at Mr. Whiteface and how ridiculous it is it's and of crazy, course these things are not gonna crazy happen spirit if, what do you know so then they go see the king and the king promotes them both like what up mm. you're promoted and they're just like oh snap this, this comes is for with real. a pay raise <laughs> yeah so then <laughs> it shows washizu in his new digs because his promotion got him some new digs yes and he's telling his wife about all the shit that happened right yes his wife's name is asaji and she's a bitch. She is a trifling bitch. Trifling. She's just like, oh, so you know what's going to happen, right? Mickey is going to tell the king. The king is going to be afraid you're going to try to take his throne. Yep. And he's going to come after you. Yep. And he's just like, nah, Mickey's my boy. Like, We've been friends since childhood. And she's like, no, I'm your boy. I know <laughs> what the fuck is up. I'm your boy. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's me and you, bro. So, everything is me yeah she's like mickey's gonna sell you out and he's like no he's not then like at the perfect moment servant runs up and he's like the king is coming the and they king. just look at each other and she's, and she's like, like See, bitch i told what you. i sell yes. yeah <laughs> this so, is my third glass of wine what i sell you <laughs> what i sell you <laughs> what i sell you <laughs> well she's who goes and sees the king the king wants his assistance in attacking on we which is what we've decided to call the enemy. Yes, He's we've French gone with now. the French pronunciation. <laughs> they fight. In this fight. Japanese Shakespeare. Yeah. Uh, so he eases his fears. And he goes and tells Asagi. He's like, see? He's not Nothing. here for me. And Asagi's like, no, bro. Like, here's what's really up. <laughs> <laughs> Let and, me tell you the real, real. Yeah, she's just like, Mickey is just wait. Like, Mickey's over there safe. 
just waiting for you to die in battle. Yeah. Like, this shit's not over. Yeah. She's like, don't dream it. Be it. Be it. You gotta make your fate. Make it. So she's like, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna drug his guards, right? Yes. We're gonna put him to sleep with some sleeping potion in the sake. Sake. Like you do. Yep. And... That's how I sleep every night. <laughs> sleeping potion in the sake. Yep. <laughs> I've got sake in my fridge right now. No shit. I, you know, I almost went, like, wanted to get some because I it's thought like good. it would be fitting. It's not? No. Luke likes it. Zach likes it. If it's I don't like warm, it. he really yeah, likes it. Yeah, Zach will, he microwaves it. <laughs> so it's warm. So American. I know. So anyway, she's like, we're going to drug the guards. You're going to kill the king. And then you're going to become king. This is an ironclad <laughs> plan. Right. What could go wrong? There is no other option. Oh, there's your fucking cat. I was wondering. So they do that. She walks into and out of this like dark closet. Yeah. And it's creepy as fuck. Like she yeah. just completely disappears yeah. and then reappears. It gave me chills. It's fucking creepy. So Washizu kills the king. Asaji yep. frames a guard. Because that bitch is trifling. The king's son fears that he's going to be blamed. So he leaves. Yes. He runs to Mickey with Noriyasu. Yep. Who's a guy. Yep. That exists. He's... The guards were his guards. Yes, that's right. They're so they're his both men. afraid that they're going to be blamed for this shit. Right. When they didn't have anything to do with it. They both know it was Washizu. Yeah, so they run to Mickey. And they're just like, Mickey, bro, let us in. And Mickey's like, nah. Like. He's like, I don't. like the deck is stacked against you. I'm good. He's like, I don't want to help you. So they start shooting arrows. They run into the forest. Washizu shows up. And, uh. He doesn't want to go in because he doesn't know where Mickey's head's at. No. So Asaji, the mastermind, she's just like, bro, here's what you do. You bring the king's body home. He's got to let you in. And it's a so sacred So you can bury duty. the king. You can't yeah. not. And he's not going to mess with you while you're doing this. Nah. That would be dishonorable. So. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. Dishonor on your family. <laughs> so. Him and Mickey see each other. Things are tense, but they're good. Like, like they're fine. Mickey's like, man, I'll totally talk you up to the council. Like, I got you. Yeah, I got your back. So then he becomes king. And then she's just like, you're never going to rest easy because Mickey wants to kill you. Because right. as soon as you're dead, his son is going to become king. That's what's going to happen. Right. Just like you killed the king, he wants to kill you. And he's just like, oh, no, that makes sense. Yeah. So... We time jump. Now I like zoom. how they're all thugs. Like, we're fucking this Japan, feudal Japan. We're like, bruh. It ratchet. is what it is. Now Washizu is king. Yep. And he's being forced to name an heir because he doesn't have one. Right. Asagi's not doing her end of the Man, bargain. Why the fuck? I'd be like, dude, I just took the throne. Give me a chance. Well, that's the thing. We don't know I how can, much time is left. I can make an heir. Right. I will fuck the shit out of my wife. I will get it in, <laughs> son. <laughs> He's going to name Mickey's son. And Asaji's like, hold up. You name his son. The first thing they're going to do is kill you. You're dead. Yeah, you're dead. It's over. And she's like, and besides, I'm knocked up. Right. Did I'm not believe pregnant. that bitch. I didn't either. I was like, she's faking this. Mm -hmm. I know women like that. Mm-hmm. And because we used to know women like that, we used to know women like that. We that don't bitch anymore. is what? What is she, Vicky? Trifling. She's trifling. Who knows? Then we go over. We see a scene with Mickey and his son. Mickey's telling his son about how great his fortune is. And Mickey's son is like, bro, like you're listening to evil spirits. And like we've seen what Washizu is capable of. Are you fucking kidding me? Like right. we're not going to dinner. No. Fuck that. No. Mickey's son is the only person in this movie that makes any goddamn sense. He's the only person in this movie that's hot. Yeah. But probably not now. Probably not now. Probably dead. But then he was hot. I bet my grandma was like, hey, boy. I know. Hey, what that dick do? What that dick do? <laughs> Ooh, I don't want to think about my grandma being like, what that dick do? <laughs> All right. That's not okay. So Mickey doesn't show up to dinner. No. And Washizu looks real upset. Yeah, he's pissed. Yes. Then, where Mickey is supposed to be sitting, Whiteface shows up, right? Yep. And Washizu flips the fuck out. Right? He massive freak out. But if there is anything, any person in this movie that gives a shit about Washizu, it is Asaji. She's like, bro, I got your back. He's yes. just drunk, guys. He's drunk. This happens. He's drunk. 
So everybody calms down. Then he sees them again. Freaks the fuck out. When it happens again, she's like, this party's over. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> Get it's, the fuck it's out. time to go to bed. So bed. she sends everyone away, including the servant that she fucking screams at. Yeah. But, well, because she's like, okay, everybody, it's time to retire to your rooms. And the servant, obvi- well, she's a servant, so she stays there. And she turns around. And she's like, I said retire. Right. So she <laughs> sends them out. Except in Japanese. The assassin <laughs> shows up because yeah. apparently there's one of those in this movie. Yeah. And he tells Washizu that he was unsuccessful in killing Mickey and his son. He only killed Mickey. And his son has fled to Anhui, where yes. Noriyasu and the prince are. Yes. And this is infuriating yes washizu kills him yes not clear if he does that to keep him quiet or because he failed or both asaji is not impressed with this botched attempt no he's pissed Anwi is blamed for mickey's death we have a scene with commoners discussing it yeah so they're just like bro it doesn't make any fucking sense that mickey is killed by Anwi and then his son runs to Anwi. like that just doesn't add up right then we see Asaji has delivered a stillborn baby. She's not doing great. Washizu no. is under serious attack by Anwi yep. and Mickey's son and Noriyasu and the They're prince. Coming. They're, They're coming. They're coming for him. He goes to see Captain Whiteface, <laughs> who advises him that until the trees rise against the castle, he will not lose. So <laughs> Washizu takes this at face value. Yeah, and then he lasts for like 27 minutes. Yes. So Washizu <laughs> takes this at face value and he's like, I'm good. Right, even though he's fucking laughing evilly. Forever. Forever. And the first time he gave him prophecy, it was very cut and dry. Like, bro, you're getting promoted, then you're becoming king. Right. There was no poetry to it. He wasn't speaking in riddles. And now all of a sudden it's trees and castles and bullshit. And so he's just like, oh, okay, I'm going to win. So he goes home. His Mm. armies are, like, getting nervous. And he's like, nah, bros. This is what happened. He tells them about the prophecies. Yep. And then he tells them about the trees coming yep. up against the castle. They all have a good laugh. A very Japanese ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. ho, ho, ho. <laughs> so they all laugh. <laughs> they laugh like Santa, sort of. <laughs> They're Japanese all Santa, great. though. And then the trees rise up against them because they cut down the trees to hide their numbers. Yes. And uh, he dies. Yep. And his wife loses her fucking mind. Yep. That's pretty much thrown to blood. Yep. How do you feel that it adapted Macbeth? I feel like it was it did a good job. It's kind of similar. A brave Scottish general named Macbeth receives a prophecy from a trio of witches that one day he will become king of Scotland. Consumed by ambition and spurred to action by his wife, Macbeth murders King Duncan and takes the Scottish throne for himself. He is then racked with guilt and paranoia. Forced to commit more and more murders to protect himself from enmity and suspicion, he soon becomes a tyrannical ruler. The blood path and consequent civil war swiftly take Macbeth and Lady Macbeth into the realms of madness and death. They There's go crazy. also drawbacks to knowing your own future. Right. When Luke watched this with me. He loved the flute music. <laughs> I really dug the flute. It was really creepy. he did not like it. I he was just like, it. Oh my god, how long is this gonna go on? He's like, I okay, hope these wait, are the which which one? The credit one? Yes. Yeah, no, that was too fucking long. Yeah, he And there was it. a lot of like heavy breathing or something during it and it was really uncomfortable. Well he was just anxious to know whether or not there were gonna be subtitles. <laughs> yeah. Uh so anyway, um <laughs> Yeah. We watched it together, and he was talking about how Lady Macbeth, or Asaji, was stupid because she was pressing him to make his own fate, but his fate had been read. And right. so, like, he should be able to do nothing, and that come to pass. Right. Which reminded me of this, like, super old, stupid joke that my cousin used to tell, and it's uh, about there's a flood coming, mm-hmm. and this guy uh, prayed about it, and... Mm. He was convinced that he had a message from God that God was going to save him. Okay. So the water starts to get high and his neighbor comes by and he's just like, hey, I got room in my car. Like, come on. He's like, no, 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 I'm good. God's going to save me. So then okay. it continues to rain and he has to get up on his roof where he has to go to his second story. And somebody comes by in a boat and they're like, bro, we got you. Climb right in. He's like, no, no, no. God's going to save me. I'm good. So it keeps raining. He has to get on his roof. Helicopter comes by. And they're like, you know, we're, we're taking in people. Come on. They throw him down a ladder. He's like, no, 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 I'm good. God's got me. And so they fly off. And then he drowns. 
And he goes up to the pearly gates and St. Peter lets him in and he goes straight up to God and he's like, bro, where were you? Like, you told me you were going to save me. And the guy's like, I sent two car or a car, a boat and a helicopter. What were you thinking? (laughs) And so that popped into my head. It's just like, sometimes you do have to make your own fate. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So I can see both sides of the argument. Like, if fate is fate, I shouldn't have to do anything. But at the same time, like, you should, you should work for what you get. You should make it happen. Well, I think with Macbeth and with Throne of Blood, the thing is, since their fortune was foretold, it put that bug in their ear, mm-hmm. and their ambitions fucked them. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Yes. Because it, th- there's a danger in knowing your own future. Yeah. That's like, um, you don't watch um, Black Mirror, do you? Uh, no, I watched that episode with you, and I've watched the first episode. <laughs> first episode's rough. Yeah. The pig fucking. Z- yeah. It's rough. I wasn't Zach sure I wanted I, to keep watching. Yeah. Yeah. Zach and I keep meaning to watch more, but we've not gotten around to it yet. It's really interesting. Uh, there's the new season was a mixed bag for me. Like yeah. I, there are, I think seven episodes, and I really liked two. I really didn't like two, and okay. the rest were okay. Okay. There's an episode about uh, in this alternate future, you're matched up, like to date this system is trying to find your perfect match and so they send you on dates they gauge your reaction to each other and they predict how long it's going to last and so you're with that you're stuck with that person for that amount of time Mm -hmm. and then and then it's over right until they find your perfect match so the story is about this guy and this girl go on a date he's super awkward and backward and weird Uh and she's not any of those things but for whatever reason they really mesh well and she kind of brings him out of his shell and she just thinks he's really charming and funny and cute right and so they there's the thing tells them how long they're going to be together they have like this little it looks like a birth control (laughs) thing okay and so they're just like let's find out and it said like 12 hours and they're Uh just like oh really like i'm kind of digging you like what's that about and the way that the system is work is when it's over it's over right they go their separate ways and then like she keeps looking every person that she gets with she keeps looking how long she's going to be with them and it's like she doesn't even enjoy the time that they have together because she knows how long it's going to be right so you're like what's the point yeah there's like a a, what's the point knowing your future informs what's going to happen right you know what i mean yeah. I don't know. What's it was interesting and that it, self-fulfilling prophecy stuff right. makes me think of it. You should check it out. That that was one of my favorite episodes. Sure. Vicky had a snafu. I did. You guys may have seen it on Twitter. It's still there. It's still there. I did not feel poorly enough about myself to delete it. I think it's funny. I do too. Vicky tweeted and she's just like, I don't know what the fuck is happening. There are no subtitles. This isn't in English. And I just happened to look at Twitter, and I'm just like, uh... Right? Like, what are the chances? Yeah. Well, I'm trying to, like, up my Twitter game, because it's, like, yeah. it's sad. And so I was on Twitter, and I was like, Vicky, mine had subtitles. And I was and like... she got it from me. Immediately, I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? I thought Luke and I were bros. Like... Why would you fuck me like that? Why, if you knew that you downloaded a copy without subtitles, would you not be like, hey, Vicky, I need your drive mm. to give you the copy with subtitles? Like, well, no, you had the same thing that we did. I know, now. Yeah. <laughs> but in the <laughs> moment, I was like, what the fuck? So, I so mad. Vicky watched it for 49 minutes, almost an hour, with no subtitles. Yeah, so I, there was a lot of. I'm not sure what's really happening. I was like, maybe I'm just supposed to really focus on their tones and their facial expressions. I don't know how you did it. And their body language. And I was like, other than the evil spirit being the three witches, I was like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. (laughs) So, you know, the... I was like, there is much galloping and yelling in this movie. I don't know what's going on. It's like, they seem to be arguing. I made it to the scene where they're like 
after the great lord has been killed Mm -hmm. and the prince and what's his name are going back to the castle Mm -hmm. and all of the army is like storming that camp and they're like arguing Mm -hmm. i made it to there before you tweeted me and you were like mine had subtitles (laughs) and i was like are you fucking kidding me Okay, so <laughs> Luke and I, we started watching it. He was thrilled with the flute music. And then, yeah. you know, the very first scene where the guy, like, runs up, falls to his knees, and gets yeah. the report on how yeah, the war is going. Yeah, the first messenger, yeah. We got into the first messenger. There were no subtitles. And Luke's like, hold on a minute. And he figured it out. He got the subtitles working. And I made him rewind because I didn't want to miss anything. I didn't know right. what was going on. Right. I can only imagine 49 minutes. 49 minutes. <laughs> Zach said, why didn't you ask somebody? I said, I Googled it. (laughs) Google didn't tell me expressly. Yes, yes, Vicky. If you press the fucking right button on the PlayStation, you will have subtitles. (laughs) He was like, how do you think subtitles get on movies? And I was like, I don't fucking know. I don't put subtitles on movies. I work in finance. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know that I would recommend this to just anyone. No. But... I did like it. I thought it was good. Yeah, I probably won't watch it again. No, but then I probably wouldn't watch Macbeth either, so. That's fair. It's just not my bag. That's fair. Shout out to Tyler. Shout out to Tyler. He just let us know that he found a movie that we couldn't find. What up, Luke? Why are you slacking? I know, right? See, much like Asaji has Washizu's <laughs> back, Tyler has Luke and our back. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. All right, so... Thanks, Brock. I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks for listening. As always, we appreciate it. Contact us on social media. We are on Facebook, the Drama Mamas Podcast. We have a Gmail. If you want to email us, dramamamaspodcast at gmail.com. Vicky is in control of our Twitter account. We are at Drama Mamas Pod. Hell yeah. We are active on there i interact with it because i know vicky's behind it all we're following for follows Hell yeah, so if you are. follow us we'll follow you um you can rate us and we would appreciate it if you did we would really appreciate it if you did and uh let's see subscribe on google play itunes i post everything on the facebook and you're welcome to listen there but you can subscribe and get it automatically to your device of choice choice yeah so unless there was anything else no remember to save the drama for these mamas hell yeah what what next week on the drama mamas but fuck you yeah yeah but fuck but you. fuck you but, but fuck, fuck you. you take it how you want but fuck you <laughs> take it how you want that's what she said but fuck you